The URL of your website is an important part of your branding. In this part of the lesson, we're going to take a look at some of the different ways that you can control the URL of your site. So far, we saw that the default URL is based on a combination of your account name followed by github.io and then a slash which includes the repository name for your site. Obviously, you have a limited amount of control over this based on what you choose for your repository names and what you're able to get for your account name. If the account name that you want to use for your website is available and not used by someone else, you can start an account by that name. However, if someone already has that name, you're stuck. But if you use this format, you do want to think about the repository in which your website is housed, because that name of the repository is going to become a part of the site URL. It turns out that there is one special repository name that you can use, which will allow you to simplify the URL by dropping off this repository part. And the name of that repository is the name of your account followed by github.io. Obviously, there's only one repository you can create with that name within your account, and that's the one that will be used for this special URL. I can illustrate this with my website. Originally, I was only using Baskoff S as my username, and then I set up a second account under Baskoff to use for testing. However, I realized that for my website, I really wanted it to be baskoff.github.io, not Baskoff S. So I set up the repository baskoff.github.io within my Baskoff account. If you look at this, you will see that it is the modified theme that we looked at in the last section. So when it's rendered, instead of being baskoff.github.io slash baskoff.github.io, which is what it would be if we followed the pattern that we've seen before, it's just simply baskoff.github.io. There is actually a third option, and this is perhaps the best option if you're not able to get an account name that's as good as the one that I have. If you have a common last name, you're probably not going to get it because someone else probably already has it. However, if you go to a DNS provider like GoDaddy or any of the other ones that sell custom domain names, you can use that custom domain name within your GitHub website. It's a little bit complicated, but there are explicit directions on a linked page that will walk you through it. The overall idea is this. You buy a domain name from a DNS provider, whatever domain name you're able to get. And then in GitHub, on the pages setting page of the repository, you enter the custom domain name that you want to use. That is how GitHub knows how to interpret the incoming traffic. Then you need to go on the other end to the DNS provider and tell it that it should send requests for web pages to GitHub pages, either through your subdomain name, like baskoff.github.io, or through a series of GitHub pages IP addresses that are found on the instructions page. If you want your website to be able to use both the straight domain name or the domain name with www dot in front of it. You have to also set up a C name redirect record with your provider in order to make that work. So it's a little bit complicated, but once you get it set up, it doesn't matter what your account name is or what repository name you use, because for both of them, your custom domain name will be substituted.